All right, here's my Honda Foreman. I've had it on this trailer for like a month or so. The weather was cold, but now it's getting warmer. Let's get this baby unwrapped and uh, brought back to the shed. All right, we got a bunch of stuff moved around. I think we have enough space to get the newest edition, the Honda Foreman. It's a 2001 S, so it's a foot shift, not the electric shift. And I think it's full-time four-wheel drive. You know, it's in decent shape. Everything's there. It looks like plastics are a bit rough. Stickers are a bit faded, but that's all cosmetic. This is the first one I bought that has engine issues. So the owner says it doesn't run. He was driving it and it just died. And he had one of his friends look at it. And the friend said it needs a motor overhaul. So don't exactly know what that means, but... You only got only got her paid seven hundred and fifty dollars for this, so I sh even if I can't get her going, it, I shouldn't take a loss. So let's uh, get this in the shed and dive into it. Yeah, before I really get into it, I kind of want to see how many miles are on this thing. It's kind of hard to tell, so because that screen is all scratched up. So I got some sandpaper. I'm just gonna sand on that, see if I can make that a little clearer. All right, I just got the screen all cleared up. Let's see. No, oh, it says 11,342 miles. Oh boy, that's quite a lot. All right, well, uh, let's see if we can get this thing running. Let's check for spark and then uh, compression and then go from there. All right, I got the spark plug out. Let's just see if it's got spark. All right, well, step one, it has spark, so that's good. All right, I got a compression tester hooked up, so got the key on, I'm just gonna push the starter button and put the throttle wide open and let's see what we can get here. Oh. Goodness, it's like less than 30, so I don't know the specs, but I imagine that is way too low. All right, I got the carb off, got the gas tank off, some of the covers off, so there's the air box right there. So I don't know, I think I'm just going to start digging into the engine. You know, that compression seems super low, so I imagine it needs a top end. So let's see. Alright, I was looking online, they say to do a wet compression test, so you just dump some oil down the hole, and then if the reading increases, then it's probably, you know, a worn cylinder, walls, or piston, so, let's okay, I got my assistant here, why don't you start it and see what happens, you gotta turn the key. Yeah, Alright, so yeah, it increased a bunch, so... It's over 60. So it's probably a worn. What do you think? A worn, you need a new top end on that thing? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll start taking it apart. See what we need to do. All right, uh, I think I'm just going to take that cover off. That should be where the valves are. So I'm just going to you know, see where the valves are measuring and see if they need to be adjusted at all. All right, sorry, I moved that cover right there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a T right there, and then it lines up with that little notch on the side. So let's line up that T with the notch, and then you should be at top dead center, and then you can use your feeler gauge. Um, I think the specs are 0 .006. So I'm going to slide that in there and see where they are at. All right, stick in my gauge in there. I got the .006. It's just like really loose in there, so I don't know. Maybe that could be the issue. I'll, I'll try adjusting that. So I think you just adjust that nut right there and then tighten it up and then tighten it back down. So I'm going to mess with that, see if I can get them adjusted correctly. All right, it's actually really easy to do. You just loosen that nut, put your gauge underneath, and then tighten this top screw so it slides under there easily, and then just 
tighten that nut down. So they're both in spec now. So um, I think I'm gonna just put that cover on and then give it a compression test and see if it changed at all. All right, new compression test done. Still under 30, so really nothing has changed. So I think we're actually gonna take this thing apart and try to do like a top end. So let's get that cover back off. All right, I got the exhaust off. Kind of just pushed it to the side. I don't know if you have to take it all the way off, but if we have to, I will. Um, yeah, pop that top cover off. And then I'm just gonna start taking bolts off until I get down to that cylinder. And then we can take a look. Let's go. I got that top head off it really wasn't too hard um, here's kind of what it looks like here's the underneath so it's like one valve is darker than the other I don't know what that means and the head looks pretty dark so it's gonna work on getting the that jug off and then uh, we'll take a look all right just to finish it off there's two more 10 millimeters up there I just popped those out and I just kind of there we go all right got the tap and out that's awesome all right, here we are the next day. I ended up getting that piston off. Who would have thought that was gonna be the hardest part of this whole process? You know, taking the engine apart took about 45 minutes, but then getting that piston off took <laughs> the whole rest of the night. So, tried a whole bunch of different things to try to get it off. Um, what ended up working is I put this 9 16 bolt through on one side, it fit perfectly in there, and then I used a bolt on this side and then pounded it out that way you know I tried everything I almost <laughs> got my angle grinder out to try to cut it off I'm glad I didn't end up doing that but yeah here are the circ clips I popped off right there so yeah I was surprising that that was the hardest part is getting that piston off so I got a new piston and jug ordered so here's what that cylinder looks like in there one side seems okay, but the other side is really scored up. So, same with this piston here. It, that side is really scored up. So, something must have happened in the, the rings were all stuck on one side. So, I got the new parts ordered. So, I'll probably just end this video here. And then, um, next video, I'll try to get everything reassembled and put back together and hopefully get this thing running. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.